Hey guys, I am here for my June reading wrap up today. Um, I got my reading journal out because I did a May and like, I don't know, first 10 days of June wrap up, you know, a couple weeks ago. And then I realized I just want to like say which books I read in June that I already mentioned in there. So let me find it here. Okay, books I finished in June. I'm pretty sure I talked about Firestorm. That was uh, Christian Suspense. Um, that one I gave four stars. The Ministry of Motherhood, I gave four stars. Premeditated Myrtle, I also gave four stars. There's a theme here. Animal Farm, oh wait, that was me. Well, let's not talk about that. Uh, Satisfied by uh, Alyssa Bethke, I gave that one five stars. Love that, um, that was nonfiction. Um, the Westing Game, I don't think I've even talked about this one yet. No, I have not, but we did a buddy read. And so that video is up. You can kind of go hear some of my thoughts. Overall, I didn't really like it. I probably would have DNF'd this if it was not a buddy read. So it's a, I don't know, 16 people get put into an apartment, you know, like in different apartments. Um, and they're kind of, a bunch of them are competing for this inheritance. Uh, there was way too many characters for me. I didn't really like any of them. Yeah, I didn't really like how it was written. A lot of people like this one. I wasn't a really big fan. A lot of people compared this to the inheritance games. So I was kind of expecting something similar and it was a big letdown. If I was not reading this as a buddy read, it probably would have been like, well, if I would have read it all the way through, it probably would have been like two stars, but I feel like maybe the buddy read made it a little bit better. Um, we are buddy reading a different book next month, uh, My Life with the Liars, which I'm so excited about. I still need to announce the date for that. So I'll probably, probably do that on my community tab soon, once I figure out what date it is. So I mentioned I read Premeditated Myrtle. Well, I also read book two, How to Get Away with Myrtle. Um, I love I love the puns on these titles. Uh, this is a middle grade murder mystery story, Myrtle Hardcastle. It's, it's very like Sherlock-esque. Um, yeah, and I like her. And there's a cat involved. She has a pet cat, which is cool. And book three is coming out later this year. And it's one of the books I'm anticipating for the year. Oh. I was wondering if I could have used this for the animal on a cover prompt for my read your bookshelf challenge, but like there's an animal on the spine, but not on the cover. Um, anyway, if you like middle grade mystery stories and you haven't started this series yet, I would recommend this. I feel like this is going to be a fairly fast wrap up since I kind of talked about some of them. And then I did talk about Dead End by um, Nancy, I still don't know how to pronounce her name, Mel? Mel? I don't know. That's the third book in that Christian suspense series. Um, a lot of the books that I read were, were like library books or ebooks and my library books mostly had to all go back. So I read Network of Deceit which is book two, after, yeah that's two, after Collision of Lies. Um, this is supposed to be a Christian suspense mystery series. Honestly it's just a clean suspense mystery series is what it is. Um, but it's pretty good. I liked book one more. Book two had like less going on. Uh, what was even the point? Oh yes, um, some kids went to a water park, that's what it's called, and one of them ends up dead. But um, he has things, signs, I don't remember even what they were, like medical signs of some sort when they do the autopsy that are suspicious. Oh yes, his feet aren't wrinkled. That's what it is. And so they think his body was put into the water after he was killed. That's how it goes. Um, and the story ensues. Then I talked about this one in my last book haul and stuff. Uh, Love Without Borders. This was a fast read for me. So this is Angela Braniff. She has two channels here on YouTube, Angela Braniff and This Gathered Nest. And I have like followed her on and off. Um, I'm kind of weird with like following kind of more like family vlogger type people um just because sometimes I feel like they're so perfect like their lives are just like she's always like done up so well and I, I feel a little bit less than and recently I started following her again and I was like oh no she's just a normal person I just need to get over my weird quirks I guess anyway they have um, a couple of biological children a couple of internationally adopted children a couple domestically adopted children some embryo adoptions um they've had a lot going on and this book is the story of how that all happened and it's so interesting there's so many parallels in their story to our adoption and foster care journey and and um my one my foster son he totally thinks 
He thinks one of these girls is my daughter, and he thinks this is my son, and he figures this is my husband, and then like, I don't know who he thinks the rest of these people are, or where the rest of us are, but that's not me apparently, and him and his sister aren't on here, um, because there's no like, you know, indigenous people on here. It's so funny. Jared's like, yeah, because all white and black people look exactly the same, so that's why those ones look like our kids or something. Anyway, um, I appreciate her writing. Her Christian faith comes through here so much. Um, she talks about just how, you know, how hard it was. And that doesn't mean that you're not supposed to go through it. It was like right when I was watching a Christian YouTuber who was saying, verbally saying like, oh, when things are easy, that's when she knows that God has told her to do it or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, right. I don't know, like maybe God brings you on these easy paths, but usually like with our adoption process, we hit like brick wall after brick wall. And like, if we would have just given up, we would not have this amazing son. And in here she talks about how it was hard and like hard is not bad. And I appreciated that so much. Ooh, then I really read a really fun one uh, from NetGalley and I'm really excited about this series. So it, the series is called Jane Austen Investigates. And this one was the Abbey Mystery, which is book one. And it is a middle grade mystery series that is not murder mystery, which I'm not even sure how I feel about like middle grade murder mystery series. I enjoy reading them, but yeah, whatever. Anyway, this one is just like mystery. And it's Jane Austen, the writer, as a young kid, and she like writes um, things in her journal. It was so funny. At the beginning of the first book, this one, she um, wrecks her one dress. And so she like writes up this memo for her family. And it was like dress number one, or dress number two, previously dress number two has been you know, retired, and dress three is now taking place of dress number two, and dress four is now dress number three, and like, I don't know, it, it was funny. There's a lot of humor, and um, the mystery part was fun. I think my daughter will really like that, and my son actually, he really likes mystery stories, so he'll probably like that one as well. Ooh, then I finally read Unoffendable. So many people have told me about this book, and I don't know why, I was just like kind of hesitant. Um, I don't think Brant Hansen's writing will be for everyone, because he's like very sarcastic and stuff, but I love it. Like I read Blessed Are the Misfits earlier this year and now Unoffendable, and I have not stopped thinking about this book. Uh, so it's pretty much just how we as Christians should love people and not be offended when people sin and, you know, don't follow through and all these things because we're all human and that's what we're gonna do. And I don't know, it was just like the perfect timing. I so needed it. Now I just wish there was like a kid's version because I have a few kids that should maybe read that as well. Um, oh, I've been talking, forgetting about stars. That one was a five star for sure. Um, the Jane Austen investigates one I gave four stars. Love Without Borders was five stars. And Network of Deceit was four stars. I'm not sure if I missed any other ones. Then I read kind of like a comic-esque book. Um, I saw this one on Krista's library haul quite some time ago. It's I Will Judge You by Your Bookshelf. It reminded me a lot of the book Book Love that I read a year ago. Um, I had to return it to the library so I'm gonna like overlay some shots if I didn't lose the footage. Um, some of the comics, they're pretty funny. Um, it's just like, you know, book reader problems kind of thing. But there was a few that I was just like, well, that's not applicable or whatever. So I didn't like it as much as Book Love, but there was a lot of fun stuff in there as well. Then I read two Enola Holmes. So I think this one was, I think this one's book three. The case of, you guys, I can't say that word, the peculiar, the peculiar fan? Did I say it? Pink fan. Um, I'm not gonna say that again. I cannot say that word. My brain can say it. My like, mouth gets so confused. And the case of the bizarre bouquets. So this series is like a solid like three and a half four star series for me. Uh, Enola Holmes is the younger sister to Sherlock and Mycroft and three and four. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm going through the series. The next book, a new one, is coming out in like a week, I think. So I'm trying to get these read so I can get that one read. Um, yeah, just another fun middle grade mystery. No death that I can remember in them, so like, wait, I take it back. I do not think it's a middle grade mystery series. It is written like it is a middle grade mystery series. The, um, Anola is supposed to be 14, but there are like themes in here that I would not, my daughter did read book one, but a lot of it went over her head. There was a lot of like um, terminology from the Victorian times about like bustles and well, she knows what of course it is, but like there was other other kind of things that she didn't understand. But there's a lot of comments in here about like ladies of the night and that kind of thing. And in the book, I don't think Enola really even knows what those are, but there's a lot of like talk about them because she often goes out at night and sneaks around and stuff. And yeah, so 
personally I wouldn't let my kid read this till they're older but they're very fast and read like middle grade books so and then there's also like very strong feminist themes which I mean I don't know it's just kind of like neutral I just feel like it's 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 maybe pushed a little much in these books but not it's not to the point where it's like bothering me oh back to the Enola books apparently I also read book two so I've read two three and four um I'm collecting these editions my library mostly has like the other editions then I read what I in my mid-year wrap-up whatever it's called mid-year freak out um I'm naming this as my favorite book of the year so far fragments of fear uh this is a suspense story that had way more going on in it in the first hundred pages than I've like ever read in a book I I I read this in the evenings uh over two evenings I think or an evening and like the next morning I just I couldn't put it down and normally I fall asleep in the evening when I read books so that's huge so what can I tell you okay where do I even start <sighs> so much happens um a woman gets where do I even start what's the very first thing that happens okay yes so she gets phoned by the shelter a dog shelter no even before that the very first chapter um she's at her fiance's funeral who she thinks has been murdered but the police don't believe her and they think she's kind of crazy she's at his funeral and a woman comes up to her and says um he was gonna marry me and she's pregnant and like like largely pregnant and so that's interesting so that happens and then she gets phoned by a shelter and the shelter says uh we have your dog if you don't come get him we're gonna put him down but she doesn't have a dog but she's got a soft heart so she goes and gets the dog realizes it's the dog of someone she took uh, did some sketches for and then just things ensue like things go down and i don't want to say anymore what i've told you so far takes place in the first 10 pages so like i that i don't think that's a spoiler um but a lot more happens and that's all i'm gonna say and then i read grace laced by ruth chow simmons and I had really high hopes for this. It's a gorgeous book, um, but it's very devotional-esque, which I just find of like devotions. It's just like a short, I don't know, 500 words or less, kind of little devotional. And I always just feel like they're so, I don't know, she like, she did take some fairly deep topics, but you can only go so deep in such a short amount of time. And I always just kind of find them a letdown, like I prefer to just like study my Bible. Um, so the pictures were gorgeous, but I didn't even read all the devotions. It was... It was just kind of mediocre in my mind. That's, yeah. Not a popular opinion, I know that. Then I already shared a little bit about this book when I was talking about what I've read for my Read Your Bookshelf Challenge. Um, Land of the Cranes. Uh, this is a middle grade free verse book about a girl in Los Angeles whose dad gets deported and things happen. Um, okay, I've got a few things to say. First of all, yeah, there's a lot of Spanish in here, which for me took me away from the story because I don't really know what they're talking about. So this might be good on audio. I also feel like it didn't do the free verse thing very well. They were pretty much just sentences chopped up into short lines. Like, I was kind of disappointed by that. Yeah, I don't know. So I actually, I gave this one three stars, but I really don't think I enjoyed it that much. Which is disappointing because I like free verse novels. <laughs> so that's all that I actually read, finished in June, but I did get 860 pages into Words of Radiance, which I mean, like, that's got to count for something. I didn't quite finish it. Um, I'm going to continue reading this in July and then start Oathbringer whenever I can, but we just ordered these because uh, Words of Radiance and Oathbringer, we have the mass market editions and the other two books books one and four we have like the nice full hard copy hard cover ones and i find this so hard to read because i hate breaking spines um if you are a spine breaker you are a cruel and evil person and you should not be allowed to hold books slight exaggeration um i don't like breaking spines so this is so hard to read um so now i'm just kind of waiting for my bigger copy to come and then i'll keep going and yeah i'm definitely not going to finish Oathbringer in July. That one will be my like July August read. I think eventually I will finish the series though and I did talk about this a little bit. This is like my favorite sequel um, according to my mid-year wrap-up thing. It's gotten so much better. Um, 
I feel like the first book was kind of a slog until the last like 15% of the book and then this one has been flying. So I've been doing a combination of listening to it on audio and reading the physical book. I'm glad I listened to book one on audio because now I can pronounce people's names and places and like all these made up things. Um, but it's so much faster for me to read this physically. Uh, so I would prefer to do that and then just use audio for other books. I'm kind of learning that I... I like... There's just like certain kinds of books I like on audio and certain ones I don't. I actually quite like Christian nonfiction on audio, but at the same time I also like to highlight Christian nonfiction. So it's a conundrum, really it is. Okay, and that is my wrap up for June. Um, I don't know how many books that actually was. It looks like so much less because I don't have very many physical copies here, um, but I think it was a pretty decent reading month. And I'm looking forward to July. I'm liking this kind of like creating a TBR and just like mood reading in it and like not caring if I don't actually read all the books on my TBR. Actually, some of these were already on, I made for my July TBR and then I read them in June. So I'm doing pretty good, I think. And now I can hear the kids running, so I should probably go make some lunch. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys.